This video has been sponsored by Dragon Ball Fever. More about it later down in the video. Vegeta, the former destroyer of worlds that turned good after Goku's influence. Slowly becoming a good man, a husband, a father of two, and of course, a novel Prince of Destruction. But what if that all changed and he had a bit of a swap of roles? Welcome to what if Vegeta was born as the son of the Grand Minister. Let's begin. This plot starts millions of years ago, but not on Vegeta, rather on Zeno's world. The Shinkan had a conversation with Zeno on whether they should test the mortals with two new universes. One with deities of an intellectual background and one with fighter background. Thinking for a moment, they think they shouldn't let the test go on for more than a couple billion years, so they start looking for individual races. So they create the two universes and give them a few million years of buffer before doing anything with them. At age 736, they scout the universes by mortal level, but they cannot find any fitting matches apart from Universe 7, where they find races for both contenders. The Tuffles for the intellect and the Saiyans for the combat oriented deities. The intellectual will be a female Tuffle named Sheena and the Saiyan fighter angel will obviously be Vegeta. So after that Shinkan and Zeno decided on everything, Grand Priest decides to turn the yet unborn babies into angels and to give them a few years inside their own universes. And so with that, Prince Vegeta has been born healthy and strong. There were two problems with him though. He didn't look like a normal Saiyan at all. By facial features, he was the spitting image of King Vegeta. However, his skin is blue and his hair is white. Not only that, but his power is unreadable by scouting devices. Meaning, King Vegeta has no clue on just how potent his quote unquote son is. On the other hand, on a ruined planet, a tough old girl gives birth, almost dying in the process, and Sheena was born. Sheena didn't look like a tough old eater. Much like the Saiyan's reaction, her parents also thought she's not normal and thought she had some kind of sickness due to blue skin. Then they thought that maybe the king himself somehow got in the fetus and rebirthed. But they have to wait a couple more years to figure that out. Another thing, they couldn't figure her power level out either. Their only scouting device they had didn't even want a register key from Sheena. It's like she has none, which put the two tuffle parents in a frenzy. The cries from Sheena brought the attention of the seeking Frieza Force and so they decided to kill all three of them. The two have died without even getting a good look at their newborn daughter and Sheena couldn't die, no matter how much they tried. So they decided to take Sheena to Lord Frieza so he gets to raise the child up to his standards. Grand Priest sees the backgrounds of those two aren't exactly the best but has no fear because in only 7 years they will fully grow up and stay that way. Vegeta grew really fast and so did Sheena and in a matter of a few months they were already toddlers. Sheena and Vegeta met up then for the first time since Vegeta had a similar case as her. And because of that, the two were partners in Planet Conquers for Frieza. He knew that they're kids and can easily be manipulated. But over time, the kids started having developing some kind of intellect on both ends. Of course, Vegeta's was way weaker than Sheena's, but they managed to figure out that Frieza does everything to capture and enslave. That right there was their first taste of their angel intellect kicking in. One day, they decided to ditch the planet they were conquering to escape Frieza, however they didn't know if they will be tracked. Vegeta started plotting and decided to just fly up in the air and to both his and Sheena's surprise, he managed to create a travel barrier around him, much like Whis displays in the canon story. Sheena is amazed at that, but Vegeta doesn't come back down just fast. In outer space, Vegeta can withstand no air and the extreme cold. He notices he breathes just fine and only then comes back down, explaining the whole situation to Sheena. Sheena is perplexed at the knowledge and is kind of blaming herself for not thinking of that, but Vegeta skips the self-blame part of hers and just takes her along for the ride. Frieza didn't notice they're gone, but he indeed noticed that the planet hasn't been taken over and the backup forces have died out by the warriors on that planet. Deciding to beat some sense into them, he goes there on his own to teach them a lesson. After a few days, he starts searching for him while the Guinea Force takes over the planet. The duo is nowhere to be found, so he decides to ask some captives of that planet for more information. 
He briefly explained that he just fled up and away from the planet and never came back down, to which Frieza kills them. Frieza is wondering on what kind of children are they, considering that neither of their races can survive in space like that, and decides to put a bounty on them just in case. While we stop here, this video has been sponsored by Dragon Ball Fever. It's a Dragon Ball fan comic done by an upcoming artist, Norlight. It's about a girl that has been saved from the experiments of Red Ribbon Army by an unexpected individual, Goku Black, who now grows a bond with a girl. Check it out using my affiliate links down below and support the work. Now let's continue with the what if. Five years have passed, no sign of Vegeta and Sheena. Goku was born and sent off to Earth by Bardock. King Vegeta is confused on his son's disappearance from a planet conquer as he was the one that got a beating from Frieza instead. Beerus decided that the best course of action is to destroy the Saiyan race because he didn't get the pillow he requested, but rather the second best. So Frieza gets to work with the destruction process. With that, the Saiyan race has been destroyed and Frieza keeps on with the rain and terror. Raditz and Nappa are stranded on some random planet and conversation amongst them goes a bit different than canon, as they immediately start theorizing on whether Frieza would do such a thing or not, considering Raditz's father has had some weird thoughts about Frieza's arrival and accumulation of Saiyans in one place. And so, Raditz and Nappa decide to flee too, but they flee someplace else. Vegeta and Sheena are currently 6 years old and are having a good time together being teenagers because of their fast growing and learning their powers. One power they learn to control is the travel technique Vegeta discovered to travel anywhere with extreme speed. Another one was discovered by Sheena and that is the Angel Staff, which came in handy for both of them. He didn't know what to do with them though apart from storing stuff in them, but it came in handy when he fought other people. However, everything changes one day. As they're chilling and having a bite on the planet they fled to, all of a sudden, it feels strange, like a strange presence is around them and they are creeped out by it. Vegeta in his warrior fashion decides to go and seek around. He scouts for a few meters until both of them witness the appearance of a vortex right in front of them. Turns out it's Taishinkan and they now feel at peace, knowing it's someone familiar to them. The Shinkan looks at them and tells them to come with them. Vegeta and Shino are weirded out but they tag along. Over at Zeno's world, the Shinkan brings the two over to Zeno and Zeno finally sees the fruits of their plan. Vegeta and Shina know exactly who it is without even being told and they bow down in respect, even referring to him in his full title as the Grand Supreme Ruler Zeno. Zeno is impressed as much as a child can be and the Shinkan smiles and tells the two to stand up, telling them they're gonna wait a bit longer for one more person. The Shinkan goes somewhere while Vegeta and Sheena take a look around. The Shinkan returns very fast with one more blue person. The Shinkan tells the new arrival to sit tight while he explains everything. The Shinkan began explaining how the two of them are actually their newest addition to the angel world and an experiment of him and Zeno. The parents they once knew aren't their parents in that kind of way but they took their parents looks. Everything else is his doing. He then introduces Miris as a teacher of theirs to teach them about the angel world and once they're ready they will become full-fledged angels for the two new universes that the Shinkan and Zeno have created. Vegeta and Sheena now understand everything. They're not born with some super special power, they're the children of the Grand Priest himself. That done, Miris takes them along for the ride to train and Grand Priest tells Miris he will do the final test to make sure that he's done a good job teaching. If he did, he will also be an angel just out of commission until they decide to create yet another universe. Miris accepts and he then starts training them. On earth, Goku and the rest of the gang go through pretty much everything as in canon. Goku gets along with Bulma, meets Roshi and the gang, trains with all sorts of teachers to get more powerful, grows up training on Kami's locale, fights Piccolo Jr and all the way up until Raditz Saga when Raditz arrives and takes Gohan, making Goku and Piccolo fight him off and kill him. The only difference being is that Raditz warns them about Nappa only, not Vegeta since he's not here in this case. We're continuing the series next time. While you wait for the next part, join the T23 Discord server with the vanity URL down in the description. Thank you for watching and with that, peace out.